Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you so much for downloading or streaming the Be Our Guest podcast. So glad you're here for more of your listener questions as it is midweek. And Scotty G joins me for Must See Adventures, the new vlog that you must see. So check it out on YouTube today. We are answering your listener questions. We get some great ones today about documentation that is required to sail with Disney Cruise Line. You might be surprised that you don't necessarily need a passport. It is recommended, definitely recommended to sail with Disney Cruise Line, but not always required. So we talk about that. Also some Genie Plus strategies for a guest who is going on their first Disney cruise, but they want to go to Walt Disney World for a couple of days before the cruise and want to get the most out of that time in the park. So we help them. We also get a great email from a guest who has moved to Minnesota, but grew up in Southern California. He'd visited Disneyland over 100 times but he's just now discovering Walt Disney World. And we talk about what that must be like. Many more questions on today's show. So get ready for some fun Disney talk. Don't forget today's show always brought to you by the Magic for Less Travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney vacation for no additional cost to you. Check out all the details today over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our uh, Amazon affiliate link. It's beourguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. Still time to get dad that perfect gift. And, you know, you can support the show at the same time. Be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. You make all these shows possible. You can help us out as well. Just $5 a month and you'll get our bonus show every week. It's called Mike in the Midwest. Come on over and help us out. Patreon.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Ready to take a trip to the world? You found the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. This is where your memories come front and center on our podcast stage. Welcome to episode 2,503 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at The Magic for Less Travel. Happy Wednesday to you. Hope you're having a great week. We are here in St. Louis and I'm sure up Michigan way today. We are getting together to answer your listener questions as we do every midweek and Today, it's going to be, well, this week, it's a Mike and Scott week because Pam down doing all the social media stuff with uh, sailing the Disney magic down to uh, the new island. Uh, she'll be back soon to tell us all about that. She's going to tell us about all the new offerings at Epcot. She's writing the new Tiana's uh, experience there in the Magic Kingdom and plus a lot of new stuff as well to talk about when she gets back next week. Ricky doing the mom thing. So uh, she's taking care of that because Brian's out of town. So it's just Mike and Scott. So what could happen? Fun podcasting is going to happen. That's what's up. So Scotty G joining me to tackle listener questions. Scott, what is going on? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, Mike. It's funny. So Ricky's doing the mom thing. We do the dad things too, but we've been there. Our, we're doing the dad thing with 16 year old daughters. So like, oh, <laughs> there's dude. not, there's not, it's summertime. They're taking care of themselves, even though Emily might who's an early riser i get a text i'm in a meeting at work at it's like 11 a.m this morning she's like oh my god i just woke up <laughs> like if you want to talk about summer break like waking up at 11 a.m like that's how you do it right uh, it takes you back to the old days right i mean it makes you it makes you long for those days when we were in high school exactly oh, except my daughter is furious because her whole day has been wasted basically by doing that because she felt like she wasted four hours, and I don't blame her. I like to, you. You want to wake up early and get a jump start on things, but it's summer, Emily. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it, you got to take good. a day like that, right? I mean, it's like you're right. I mean, you don't want to waste days away like that, but I mean, it, also you got to have a day like that. You know, it's like for you've sure. worked hard all year. You, you deserve that. That's good. For sure. She, she's pretty. I'm excited for vacation. the listener questions. It's Wednesday, one week from today. I'm flying to London. Holy cow! That that just doesn't even seem real to me, but. Man, it's so just, it's tell crazy. me, it's getting here quick. Tell me real quick because you do travel out a week from today. All right, so you have a week out. What does your travel day look like? Because it's international flight to London. Is it a direct flight? Do you stop in New York or something on the way? What, what's yeah. what's it look like going to London? It's great, great question. So I can do direct from Detroit, and we originally did that, but we found a way. Like this is an expensive trip, so we found like a fifteen hundred dollar savings if we flew to Boston and laid over, and we're like, you know what? Let's just do it. Like we had that day off anyway. Juneteenth is observed by my company. So we're like we have the all day to travel. So why not? So yeah, so we fly out of Detroit at 150, land in Boston. 
it's about a two hour layover and then we go direct to to london from there it's funny because it says you know it's gonna it's gonna be like 7 p.m we leave boston and arrive 7 a.m in london so that's 12 hours but it's really only a six hour flight <laughs> because of the time change like that that's just gonna be wild because i did the opposite when we went to hawaii i had the six hour time change um but man, going the up opposite way. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to deal with it, but I'm going to have to adjust quick because we're boarding the ship two days later. So nice. Yeah, and you'll have it all on social media, I'm sure, like updates and stuff like that. Absolutely. I'm excited. Absolutely. Hopefully, I can sleep on that plane. That's the goal. The goal is to wake up super early that day, so I'm tired by the time that flight to London happens, and then I just sleep because my first night of the vacation is on a plane, technically. <laughs> But I mean, so. you, you know, like you always, we, we've seen you, you know, when you kick off a vacation, you get on the plane, you get your beer, you get your, uh, you know, oh, yeah. the, you're on vacation mode as soon as you get into that seat. So I, 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 I think I would tell fun. you, I, I love travel day. Mike, I, 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 I do it. too. Like, I, cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm like a couple of weeks behind you, right. Or like 10 yeah. days behind you. But I mean, like I, I, Delta's running this commercial now on, on, on the channels I watch like Pluto TV and stuff. And it shows like people walking through an airport and checking their bags. And, you know, they have this app. It's basically an advertisement for how awesome their app is. But I, I mean, I'm a geek, I guess. I don't know. And probably our listeners are very much tend to, to sway the same way we do. Like I get excited just for the airport experience. I know some people hate airports, but like I get excited just to get suitcases out, pack, go to the airport. Like I, the whole thing gets me excited. Like I can't wait to go to our airport. Like that. Me too. It's vacation. I, I love getting there early. We're like early <laughs> same, airport same. arrivers. I mean, we have pre-check and all that too, but we still get there early because there's something about once you get through security and then you're like, ah, my vacation has started. Like I'll go get a beer or an old fashioned at the lounge, even though airport prices are ridiculous, but I don't care because I'm on vacation now and I can relax. And you watch people, you watch where all the, where all the gates are traveling to like, Oh, they're going to, they're going to North Carolina like that. I wonder what they're going to do in Raleigh. You know, like I just try to like picture people's stories like, Oh, what's their story. What's that couple going to be doing on their trip? You know, it's just fun. You know, I, I just, that's my, that might be my favorite day of the trip. Honestly, is the travel day at the airport. Yeah. Because everything's in front of you. Right. I mean, it's, there's nothing bad has happened. Everything's optimistic. Every plan is still perfectly in place. <laughs> you still, I mean, we have a 5.30 a.m. flight, so, I mean, it won't be an old-fashioned or anything like that. But no, 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 yeah. I don't even know if Burger King will be open to have a croissant, you know, a croissant, which yet, uh, but we'll, And that, we'll and that frustrates me a little bit. I know we're about to get to a listener questions, but, like, to me, like, time shouldn't matter at an airport, right? So right. there should be, like, some kind of 24-hour, like, counter service place open, you would think, right? But I, I'm always surprised that at our 5.30 a.m. flights, that the McDonald's is closed. Like, I, you mean I can't get like a hash brown or something this Not early? T- Dude, you just spoke. You spoke right to my soul. I'm saying, can a brother get a hash brown? Yeah. I mean, because not only is it 530, we've been up since 2 a.m. Man. I like, know. We are hungry. Oh, for real, dude. My wife needs, we, she's mad already because I booked this flight. Can I please get her a hash brown and a croissant yeah. sandwich? Come on. For just, sure. I need the, I need the <laughs> sausage croissant sandwich meal. I will pay 15 bucks for it because I got to sit next to her for the next three hours on the plane. Please, please, for the love of God, just give me a croissant with meal. Like a guy up. All right, let's go to the first question from Paul. He says, question for you, Scotty G. He says, I missed my 11-month window for the Riv to book for the 2025 Springtime Surprise Run. Should I be pretty clear to book Saratoga or Old Key West at the seven-month mark for that run weekend? What do you think? She missed a riv at uh, 11 months because it's GBC, sounds like. But uh, yeah. what about seven months for Saratoga or Oki West? I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident. Just I would say. And and there might be other options, right? I mean, you'd be surprised sometimes. And that that window is kind of interesting because I don't know exactly when springtime surprises for 2025. But I'm guessing it's after spring break time. So you might be surprised that it might be just more than Oki West or Saratoga that's open. But uh, just keep in mind, just be willing to kind of put in some of those room categories if you're after a studio for saratoga in particular like be willing to look for a studio preferred or studio like standard things like that but um sometimes you like a boardwalk might even open up because i know they have a lot of studios there or an animal kingdom lodge so i wouldn't be surprised if other things open but i'm very confident that you'll see a saratoga or an old key west at that time Good luck. And George down in San Antonio, our uh, good friend on the lizard says it is last five 30 a.m. flat out of San Antonio. The bar was open, but he, probably... I mean, that's how they do it in Texas. Uh, exactly. I mean, Texas again, we're flying. I'm flying out of St. Louis, man. I'm just lucky to get a nibble, you know, just, just something. And 
he probably flashed the locks and bam the you know the doors open it's just how it <laughs> right. happens uh ashley says uh over on instagram if flying in and out the same day of cruise dates what are good times to aim for for cruising okay so Oops. departure let me just say for departure you you always have to have your flight at least afternoon like they will not the disney cruise line does not want you to have a flight before noon on your disembarka disembarkation day um, for example, like when we're flying out, the best I could get was 155 and that's a pretty 155 PM to come home. We get home at 325. That works out fine for us to St. Louis. Um, that's a good time. I think Paige's flight, I don't know if she's booked it or not, but I found it for her and I've told her I'll pay her if she needs to book it, but it's like a four o'clock flight back to Chicago and she'll get back at six. They do not want you to book anything before noon because every once in a while there's issues with customs and clearing the ship and just traffic jams and stuff so you want to book anything afternoon now have people probably booked an 11 o'clock flight and made it probably but yeah. you're just you're tempting fate at that point so this guy i'm tempting it. fate on my trip coming mm -hmm. up <laughs> there's the sea dude okay go ahead <laughs> um yeah, because I want to get to Disneyland Paris, so I need to get to London to take the Eurostar over to France, and I I want to maximize my time, so I have like a eleven no like I think it's like a one o'clock um, train, but I have to be there at eleven, and then it's like a two hour drive, so I booked my car for eight. So <laughs> hopefully I'm off the ship by eight is all I'm saying. But like one thing to your advantage too i'll just say this out there because i know it's true for disney cruise line because i did this on our last sailing uh no two sailings ago like leave your luggage in your room that will help you get yes. off the ship faster um so you don't have to take a porter to go get your bags and all that T typically they'll let you off the ship first so hang out in the lobby area while you wait for customs to clear and just be ready to go if you're trying to make a crunch but i'm 100 percent with mike be safe and do the afternoon flight and if you said you said in as well, Ashley, and that makes me nervous because I me hate coming nervous. in the same day of the ship. Yeah, I mean, she does say in, and I mean, I, if you have to do that, I mean, it's absolutely the very first flight. I mean, no doubt about it. Because we and Scott and I've always said this that if you take the first flight, like we're taking the first flight, but we're taking it the day before our cruise. And the reason I take the first flight, and we've talked about this many times, is typically that plane is sitting at your gate the night before. Like a lot of times it'll be sitting there the night before. So you're, you don't have to worry about is your plane going to be delayed because of a storm? Like it, if I'm in St. Louis because it's coming from Chicago and there's weather in Chicago and everything gets backed up because you have an 11 o'clock in the morning flight and just things happen in another city, you know, and your, your plane or your crew has an issue. There's mechanical issues. There's just all kinds of dominoes that could fall. So, so many. God, man, if possible. And I've seen that happen. I've been on a plane. Don't where we weren't going for a cruise. It was just a regular summer trip and there, and it was delayed and there was a family sitting in the row before for us trying to get to a, for a cruise. And I was just like feeling for them. It was like two o'clock when we landed. I'm like, Holy cow, how are they going to get the Port Canaveral? And like, I don't, that I don't want that stress in my life. So Mike is absolutely right. Just if you can make it work, definitely take the day before and worst case scenario. I mean, best case scenario, I guess, take that first flight out, but I, I don't like it. I just yeah, don't like real. it. Okay, George has a follow-up here. He says, thinking about a Disney cruise in 2025, but one of the people in his group were thinking of going doesn't have a passport and is reluctant to reluctant to get one. Will they still be able to go on a cruise? Good news is yes, because I do depends know somebody. <laughs> it depends on the cruise, but I do know somebody that does go on cruises without a passport, <laughs> and that would be me. You I know do. a guy? It's my entire family. We're all platinum and we do not have passports. Now, do as I say, don't do as I do. You're probably like, oh my God, Mike, everybody, you 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 send me all these emails and you're my travel agent. You say I have to have a passport. Yes, you should have a passport. And here's why. I'm rolling the dice. I just told you don't roll the dice. I know don't you, gamble. You I roll just, the dice every time you do it. And here I am. I'm, wood, man. And here I am. I'm Kenny Rogers, man. I'm the gambler right here. That is again, I hear my I hear my grandpa from the grave right now speaking to me like Mike, do as I say, don't do as I do. Because I do go down early with the flights, right? And we have, by the way, update, we have passport applications sitting on the kitchen table that we are filling out. We are getting passports. But here's the thing. Yes, if it's a closed loop cruise, which means, and this is what this means, if you sail out of a U.S. port and that cruise leaves and returns to that U.S. port, you 
you can sail with a government uh, issued ID, so like a driver's license and a birth certificate, official birth certificate. That's what we sail with. We bring our driver's license and birth certificates and we're good. And it's going to have to be a real ID soon, but right now you don't even have to have that because you'll have to have that to fly this time next year. But if you have those two things, you're good. Here's what happens. Here's where you're gambling. If you have to come back into the States outside of that ship, you are in big trouble. So say, example, you get a medevac, like you get sick and you have to get like flown back in on a helicopter. You miss the ship and you have to come back in. Like, you know, I'm going out in the fantasy, but all of a sudden I don't come back into the States on the fantasy. I can't get back in because I am not on that ship. That's where I need a passport because all of a sudden I don't, I'm not a part of that cruise. So yes, you should absolutely have a passport when you cruise, but technically you can sail with a birth certificate and a driver's license. Don't do it. Don't do I, what I do. It's so, risky. I mean, yeah. I did it on our first one. So I will say, then I was like, nope, I'm going to pass. <laughs> exactly. I know. I know. And I keep saying I'm not going to do it, but I, I have, but don't do it. I'm, Pam Forrester's not here, so I just gave you. I just, I just said that. So I mean, I'll be nice, but I'm on. You know, I'm on Team Pam with that. But I know, it, and we're gonna get off of that. Baby you know? step. You said you got the application in the house, so there you go. Yeah, because we had Paige got a uh, updated, uh, like her debit card got updated, and she's in Chicago, so we had to like do secure mail. So we had to go to the post office. Pam went there, and she's like, "Oh, they have passport applications." Well, Paige here. must be getting her passport right because she, she's going across. Isn't she, isn't she doing some Europe trip? Well, or Paige, something? Paige already has a passport. Okay, she's had good, one good. forever because she she studied abroad in Ireland for six. That's months. right. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So Paige is well ahead of the game. Yeah, she had that one drunk night in Ireland. We thought we were going to send the police out because we found her. Find my friends. Like, where are you? We're going to get a hold of her. <laughs> Worst night of my life. I was scared to death. But she was doing the Ireland thing, right? Everybody apparently that night in Ireland was drunk. And she was a college <laughs> kid. Anyway. Too much information. We have an email from uh, Amanda in the inbox. It says, hey, BOGP crew. This is going for you, Scott. As I write this email, my family is just 11 days from our trip to the world and 14 days from our first Disney cruise. And this was four days ago. So we are like 10 days out. A week out. Yeah. yeah. We are staying on property. We'll be taking advantage of early entry on our two park days as well as purchasing Genie Plus. But I have a couple of questions about how to best utilize our Lightning Lane selections. Our first, uh, sorry, up first is Hollywood Studios. We plan to go straight to Toy Story Land and do Slinky Dog, followed by Toy Story Mania, and then Alien Swirling Saucers. Utilize our quick service dining plan for breakfast at Woody's Lunchbox, and then head on with the rest of our day. My question is, should we try to should we try for Rise or Runaway Railway for our first Lightning Lane? Runaway Railway is a priority over Rise, but we would love to do both. Everything else in Hollywood Studios is a bonus, so we figure we will just go with what's available after that. Okay, so let's stop there. What do you think? That's a t- So there's pros and cons of both. Railway was their top priority, I believe is what I heard. Yes, it is. And I will tell you, in the summertime, because it's going to be like peak summertime, and it is hot there at the time of this mm. recording right now. I'm seeing like smoking hot temperatures Dude, i'm hearing like dangerous heat when i'm seeing yeah. the news yeah and runaway railway is a mostly outdoor queue like the early part mm-hmm. of that is like it is brutal in that heat where rise is mostly like indoors i would say i mean you can be outdoors a little bit in it as well um with that even with that saying i'm still going to go with the rise one because i think you're going to see longer wait times for rise and i think there's gonna be a bigger demand for that and then runaway railway depending on how long a man is going to be there in the park like those those wait times drop throughout the day um, as it gets later in the day. So I would go with rise. I don't know what you're thinking there, Mike. No, I agree hundred percent because rise is a more comfortable queue. And mm. I think you're going to, you're going to see a yeah. bigger return on that. But just, uh, just know that yeah, when you do runaway railway, don't try to do it in the middle of the day, like do some shows, see frozen and all that. Because I, I as we we're just saying, I worry about those really warm temperatures. If you're not taking a midday break, just, just be cautious of being in those outdoor queues because that can be a little brutal. I do like that they're going to Toy Story very first thing because yes. that is a brutal queue in the sun too. Like yeah. that, I mean, <laughs> that, that one I would say definitely get done. For, they're doing it very first thing. Like that's a it. great idea because that one is probably, we're going to actually Friday shows all about queues, ironically enough. And that is probably the most rough one in the middle of the summer. I mean, I can't it think, might, I can't it, think it of anyone be. that might be worse. <laughs> 
But yeah, I like the idea that maybe it, the way the lightning lane works, maybe Rise is right after that, then you can kind of make your way over to Galaxy's Edge after Toy Story. I kind of want to enjoy Amanda and the family on this. Like, I'm loving the plan that they have so far for Hollywood Studios. I agree. What did I? What do I really like at Woody's Lunchbox for lunch? I'm just trying to. So think that's not my favorite. It's not. It's, my not favorite. it's not my favorite either. But they do have like they have some good items though. Um, they have like a tachos or there? something. Tacho, nice that meat. was it. The tachos is what I enjoyed there. Yeah, the tachos. It was something that drew me in. And she continues in Animal Kingdom. My husband and I plan to take our seven year old on flight of passage during early entry. Should we do? Navi River right after Flight of Passage or wait until later in the day and head straight to the safari. And is there something my parents and our three-year-old can do while we're all while we're doing Flight of Passage? I was told by a friend that if we can swing it to do the safari first thing in the morning and another later in the day, is the safari usually a longer wait at the end of the day where it would be worth it to use a lightning lane or just wait in the standby? Also, do they cut the line off before park closing? I'm assuming they do, given the nature of this ride. Festival of the Lion King is a must-do for us, at, and with so many show times, should we do a lightning lane or wait in standby? Okay, so that's our Animal Kingdom section. A lot of stuff there. So I'm gonna, I want to hit on the safari. Um, so the sometimes the safari does end earlier, and there'll be signs all over Africa, um, like in the in the land there saying last safari will be at this time kind of a deal so you kind of have an idea where that's going to be throughout the whole day um I, it's funny i've over our spring break trip just a few months ago we we popped in the animal kingdom late at night because we love animal kingdom we're like oh yeah let's let's go do here before we go see fantastic and to our surprise we walked right on to the safari like i couldn't believe it like everyone was at everest like i mean it was like a 60 minute wait they even kind of had like a longer posted wait, I would say, for the safari, maybe like 30 minutes. But I mean, it was all just walking right on. And it was like one of the best safaris we've ever had. And that's great that. news. I mean, that's bonus bonus right there. Right. Mm -hmm. But morning. So I like doing both. Um, I will say the safari is actually like my favorite attraction at Walt Disney World because it could be a little different each time. It's very it has a good length to it. You know, I like long attractions. And you can see just different things. Like the morning, I feel like it's totally different than it is in the afternoon. Animals might be doing different things. Like their feeding schedule might be different. So you might see some different activity out there. So if you can swing doing both for sure. Like, so you're talking about like the grandparents and uh, the three-year-old, I'd say they go for the safari while you're doing flight of passage and then you meet up and maybe they do, maybe they do the safari again. I think as long as the grandparents are down for that, I know the three-year-old would love yeah. it, but maybe you do it again right after, you know, and do Navi later in the day would be my strategy. Yeah, see, I was, I did, that was one I was having a hard time with. I don't know, because I was trying to think, because you're right there for Navi River Journey, and Navi can get a long, you know, can get a long wait time sometimes. Yeah. And if you see it, like, if you come out of, because you're there for early entry, right? Mm -hmm. And say you come out of Navi, or you come out of Flight of Passage, and Navi's like 15 minutes. Like, it's hard to walk past that. Yeah. And but Navi is usually it. later because people are drawn to that. I mean, I love, I think it's a great ride. It is a great a ride. Longer. Yeah. It, so, yeah. I, it, but yeah, the safari pays off early. Like, and you, it, 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 you're exactly right. I want to do the safari as early as possible. For, I would probably sure. do that second ride. And yeah, this I, is a weird suggestion. Don't, I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to roll with this at all, but like maybe you lightning lane. Cause yeah, it looks like you're going to like lightning lane at Hollywood Studios. Maybe lightning lane flight of passage. And as weird as it sounds, maybe you rope drop navi river journey because i promise you like you're, you'll get right on there and like i think because it that will get built up over time because everyone's going to fly the passage so you go the opposite way you do navi river journey like walk on you have your lightning lane for later in the day and then you go do the safari together as a family like i don't know that sounds like a pretty good strategy so too. What, did, what did you say to lightning lane navi no um fly to passage well no can you though because that's individual think, lightning lane isn't it oh maybe i mean yeah okay yeah, so you say have to pay for it yeah, yeah. that's one of the, yeah i don't think you can lightning lane that one that's on g yeah you'd have to buy that one but it might be worth it to save some time but i understand yeah. the strategy of trying to get there early but i mean ev that's where everyone's gonna go yeah <laughs> so know, if I, gonna now, go to fly to passage. now that i'm thinking about it i would do i would do what she says i would do but what i would do is i'd do the flight of passage early. I like what you said though. 
Then go, I would go do the safari right after Flight of Passage. I like the idea, though, the grandparents doing the back-to-back safari, meet them at the safari, because a three-year-old would love it twice. I, like the I think the grandparents, safari. it's a bench. Like, the grandparents are sitting down, but it's a moving bench with a lot of a stuff. A little bumpy at times. But yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's better than sitting on a bench. Like, it's a great experience. Yeah, and then go back and pick up Navi. It'll it'll yeah. calm down later in the day. It will at some point. Yeah. Um, like but that. yeah. But, like, I will tell you, I've rope-dropped early entry for her flight of passage i've still waited like 35 40 minutes because that's where everybody goes and emily got mad one time she's like we could have done that verse four times dad <laughs> the amount of time we waited here i'm like i know i know i'm sorry yeah and what about festival lion king i'd throw a lightning lane on that though and just oh yeah pick your time because yeah. you'll be surprised that's a good show like, that's a great that's the best show. we're talking about cues you queue up way way deep out there you yep. know like it's a long line like over spring break again not to get that example we were going to go see festival and they had already cut off the line for the next show. And there was already a line starting for that. And I'm like, Holy cow. Like, like, I mean, it's very popular. So like, I think lightning lane is definitely the way to go to saves you a lot of time, honestly. Yeah, I agree. And she says the last question about transportation. They're staying at pop century on our Hollywood studios day in Coronado Springs for our animal kingdom day. So they have two different resorts for two different days. Just thanks, Mike. Thank you. I assume the Skyliners are best option for Hollywood Studios. It is. Yes. And bus for Animal Kingdom. Yes. Uh, I'm just, unless you have a car. Let's see. I'm just confirming what I think I know. We will have a car, but my parents having EVs delivered to the hotel, so we were relying on resort transportation, which I prefer anyway. I appreciate your help very much. Sincerely, Amanda. Again, she's 23 miles from Disneyland. 2,483 miles from Walt Disney World. Yeah, I'd take the bus. And I mean, if you're going to have the EVs, the bus is the way to go. Yep. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I just don't know any other. I, I don't know how else you transport them, really, you know, without that. So that's the easiest and best way. All right. The next question comes from Zach, and it's titled to club level or not to club Ooh. level. And this one's this one's good because Pam Forrester is not here. Who would say she would just see the title and say, yes, it's like delete. It's club level. <laughs> I, know, seriously, without, without I don't need to know any parameters exactly. on it. It's just club level. She is not here. So uh, Zach from Connecticut. Here we go. Hey, Mike and crew. We're staying six nights at Boardwalk this upcoming February for our first trip back to Walt Disney World since 2019. I've started looking at the idea of moving our standard room to club level, but the cost difference is significant. Knowing the discount offer should be released in upcoming months, do I upgrade to club level now and gamble that it will be eligible for a club for a room only or package discount to bring the cost down some or... Do I keep our standard room and see if a club level room with a discount is available if and when those offers are released? We stayed club level at Wilderness Lodge on our last trip, and I've stayed club level at Boardwalk in the past and have always found the convenience, snacks, and especially the breakfast offerings to be worth the extra cost given the limited quick service options in the Crescent, Cres- Crescent Lake Resort area. Oh, that's a good point. I stuck on the the uh, the breakfast croissant, croissant no, and, the uh, breakfast Burger, Burger King. King. <laughs> that's definitely not club level, brother. Uh, we're looking for some additional insight into this dilemma. Thanks in advance, Zach, out in Connecticut. So, what would you do? Would you upgrade now? This, I'm just thinking what so, your strategy would be. Thinking like he's anticipating a possible February discount. Obviously, here in summer of 24. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but do you see like club level discounts that those happen then? Because I don't you know do. if I see them that often. No, you but. do sometimes. I mean, yeah. it's, it's all, again, discounts with Disney are always based on availability. And right. I will say Wilderness Lodge is a little bit tough because there's not a whole lot of, there's not a lot of inventory at Wilderness Lodge. They turned a lot of Wilderness Lodge into DVC, which kept the cash rooms down. I, yeah. I hate that. Well, I assume Zach wants to stick with the boardwalk one because he was talking about the Crescent Lake. Yeah, like, and board, the, the, so the, the 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 Crescent Lake resorts tend to have more availability. You know, they, they have yeah. decent availability. Yeah. Beach Club, Yacht Club, Boardwalk. So that could be one thing, right? Maybe you stick with it. And then... If a discount comes on, maybe you'd be willing to move for one that you see that pops up. Like maybe it doesn't have to be boardwalk. Maybe a, a beach club club level pops up or Cornell Springs. Well, unless if you're really tied to the boardwalk, then then throw that out the window. Um, I'd almost stick with it, Mike. I think I would just stick with my original plan, and then I would I play the if it's meant to be game, and then if it's meant to be, and a discount comes out, and I see the club level one, then I'll then I'll switch. Or, I mean, you know, he's done it before and he said he liked it and he felt like he got a good value out of it. If you really would like to have it, grab it, 
you know, have it secured then, now. And then you can go the other way. Though, then you can go the other way because there, there will probably be a regular room. And like, if it what is if there's not, that's the game. That's not, the gamble that is, is. It's a reverse gamble, right? Yeah. Then you, you take then the you're club level player. and you're paying rack rate and then no discount comes out and then your standard boardwalk room is gone. That's true. I, I mean, there should be some room available. If you, again, if you're tied to the boardwalk location, like I'd almost want to just... I think yeah. I, I guess I just don't know what Zach Valley is more. Is it just staying at the boardwalk or getting the the club level? But I would just stick with the boardwalk yeah. room. Yeah, I mean, this it, it, it we didn't help you at all. Yeah, like, we did, we didn't, but it just depends what's more important to you. Yeah, yeah. so there you go. It didn't really help, but that's in something, short, something to Zach, think about. What's your what's your what's, biggest need? Yeah, there? it is. And shout out to Mohawk Scotland, who is one of the stars of the BOGP Clubhouse over on Discord at uh, brgspodcastcom slash discord who's tuned in in Scotland on his way home today because we're recording early and uh well it's not early in scotland but I say it's still, it's earlier it's earlier it's earlier uh let's see here we had a question over on instagram and it is from uh emin <laughs> instagram names are so hard to pronounce eminem 2852 castaway key 5k question can you run the route at any time of the day on the castaway key day not sure i'll be able to make the race when we visit this summer but would quite like to run on the island good news there's no organized race anymore you run it whenever you want but i will give you some advice run as early as possible right scotty g it gets a little toasty uh out there in the jungle um but yeah yeah i mean i've seen i've seen people just run it like all day like where like I've seen like really fast elite runners out there and they would pass me because you do a lot of loops and they'll just keep passing me and passing me. I'm like, my gosh, this guy must be like, I'm um, like his, like doing a 10 K or maybe a 15 K. So like, you can just keep running it as much as you want. If you want to get like a training run, like a long run in, like I don't advise that <laughs> necessarily because it's so hot, but <laughs> you absolutely can for sure. Yeah. Cause you'll see a lot of folks that rent the bikes and so they'll be bicycling yeah. on. Cause basically what you do is there, there's a loop that goes through some, uh, like a, it's it's not a rainforest but that's it's what i call it. it's I like I, I call it the jungle i mean yeah. it's a bunch of trees but then you come out onto the airstrip which you'll see the the trams go back and forth on and people riding their bicycles and so forth um you got to do the loop twice you do it once on the way out once on the way in just to get the 5k some people don't do it both ways um but yeah you run it anytime and then you just it's an honor system and then you stop at the little shack where the there, you can see where they have the little clock they used to run and you get your little metal it's yeah. it's, it's an honor system so just i would say and i think you agree with me i i find the airstrip the worst part oh dude me too it's, i i hug i hug yeah. that right side going towards serenity bay because like you get a little bit of shade if you hug it but not much oh it's yeah brilliant. i honestly don't mind like around the trees because they they have like cool like little like things that to to look at you yeah. know like little cool signs or like the distance that you've traveled and all that like it and there's actually some water usually too um, yeah. which is always yeah nice. serious they have, they have that airstrip is like the most that's oh. worse than cone alley man that is like the worst spot to run seriously i'm like drug smugglers yes they probably did die here and i might too because <laughs> it's not good and yeah aaron box here in the chat says uh disney does an air conditioning the outdoor runs yeah dome scandal yeah totally i'm saying it's uh it's rough no it's i mean it's what we signed up for because the smart people are sitting on the beach drinking you know frozen drinks and we're out there like getting a rubber metal that's what we do Okay, uh, next. I'm date Rebecca Casing over on Instagram. I'm daydreaming about doing a quick weekend trip to the world. Any advice? My best advice is simply is do it. You can do it on the cheap. Um, you know, just, just schedule it. And just, you know, try to find, like, Southwest right now is running a great sale on flights. I just got a push notification. Grab me, like, 50% off flights. Book it. Grab a flight. Go down and stay at Pop Century. Go to a park for a couple of days. You can do quick service. I mean, you can make it. You can make it really cheap. I, I say just go for it and, and just you know try a new resort. But you don't have to go like deluxe. You don't have to have sit down dining. That's what I say. What do you think? Some of those are the best trips where you're just like, this wasn't even on my radar, and I just went down there and did it. I mean, it's just a fun story. To like come back to the to work in order to share with your family and friends like look what, look what i did look how crazy i am but it's not crazy we don't think it's crazy at no. least here on the br guest podcast yeah we'll back you up here natalie over on instagram says which resort do you recommend doing a fireworks cruise from from, uh, from the magic kingdom going in may for my bachelorette party 
We're staying at Pop. Look at this. We're giving bachelorette party advice. Holy Look cow. Look at that. Uh, da, 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 da. What about... The fireworks cruise. I'm trying to think. Fireworks cruise from the Magic Kingdom. So that... I mean, I think you... Don't I mean, they, I think you have to do the fireworks cruises from like the TTC, right? That's kind of like where they launch at, right? Or no, because I, I we've done them. I've done the fireworks because I've done them a couple times on on a Seven Seas Lagoon. We've done I've done one from the Contemporary, and I've done one from the Grand Floridian. So you just you just call the the four seven WDW play, and they'll tell you. It doesn't really matter because you go out. I mean. They'll tell you what's available for your dates. I mean, I don't think there's like a. And then essentially they all kind of like hover like. Yeah, they the all go to the same place. Yeah, they all they, yeah. they all kind of get next to each other and kind of hang out in the water. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's like a. But know, Aaron, Aaron in the yeah. chat like the from the contemporary. Yeah. So and you said you did that, so I'm gonna yeah. put a vote in for the contemporary. Yeah, I did because I love staying there anyway. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, no, they're saying that pop. That's right, they're saying that pop. Yep. All right, this is a, I gotta look over this one for Christopher. Actually, I'll just pull it down here. He says, my sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and kids are planning a trip in November, the first of the six, four park days, dining plan, and aiming for the boardwalk. Needless to say, super pricey that week with no discounts available, because again, that is the wine and wine dine and race dine. weekend. It's Jersey week. It's also, I think, Veterans Day weekend. So it's a busy weekend. They like boardwalk for the vibe, number of restaurants, and proximity to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Offered up Caribbean Beach as an alternative to save some money with Skyliner, updated rooms, and multiple restaurants within walking distance. Do you splurge for Boardwalk or pocket some cash around 2K for Caribbean? Make and sorry, that's basically they ran right? out of characters. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would you, you know? Yeah, I mean, Caribbean Beach is a, is a that's I like the way Chris is is offering up an alternative that. You know, of course, Boardwalk is going to be more plush. It's going to have, it, it's, it's a deluxe resort. It's going to have just a step up with a lot of things. The restaurants, the rooms are bigger. The restaurants are a little bit nicer. You can walk to two parks, you know. Caribbean Beach does have the Skyliner, though. It has smaller rooms, but nice rooms. You you know, the dining isn't quite as nice, but it's sufficient. But 2000 bucks in your pocket. Two is a nice savings, right? <laughs> exactly. Just, that's a lot of uh, food and wine uh, booth purchases, yeah. I'd say. Um, ah, it's tough for me. I, I wish there was a discount. <laughs> that would be my answer. Um, I would. I I, I like what you offered here, Christopher. I'm gonna. I, I'm. I say go over the Caribbean Beach. I'm. Um. I love Caribbean Beach. Is where our first uh, ever visit was to Walt Disney World, and I feel like. I feel like the boardwalk is gonna be very busy because of the because of the runners. Like if they're not into if they're not running, there's gonna be you know half marathon course is going to go by there like early in the morning there's going to be a lot of kind of stuff happening around the boardwalk area so they're not into that caribbean beach might be a, a even better alternative too just to get away from like all the role the whole running scene i'd say that's a good point that i mean they could vibe off that too like you know you could, like it, maybe you like that right because yeah. it's a different perspective on a walt disney world trip so you can go either way but if you want to like not be like in that runner bubble like i would i would go to caribbean beach all the way because you're going to see so much running stuff happening around the boardwalk yeah that that is an awesome i didn't think about that because the 10k does the 10k still go over the boardwalk it might i it think so and like well we don't know because like wine and dine is always interesting because that's like the start of the run disney season so like if they're going to make any changes to a course it would probably be that one and we just don't know what that is yet but traditionally speaking uh you would have runners going by um that location and if you're not in the running and you hear hooting and hollering. I it's mean, they true. don't like they don't do the cowbells. They don't go as crazy anymore. They kind of like ban that a little bit, yep. which I thought was always fun. I know. But um, if you're trying to sleep and then uh, you're just having a normal night's sleep, and then you hear all this like <laughs> screaming, like "Whoa, what's going on?" Go now? lizards! Like, why are people yeah. cheering for lizards? They will warn you ahead of time, though. There will be like you know information yeah. in your room warning you, or a voicemail in the in the room saying, you know, there will be fireworks, there will be runners going by, you know, and all that, but. If you're yeah. not into that Caribbean beach, plus the $2, $2,000 savings, like that seems like the no brainer to me. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, as long as they, as long as they're, you know, because they're veteran travelers, so they know what they're missing. Like it, if they're first timers, they wouldn't know. But I mean, as long as they temper their expectations to Caribbean beach and understand that's 2000 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Last question of the day. It's just titled, I love Walt Disney world now. So let's see what we got here from about a few weeks ago. 
Hey, Mike, I just started listening to your podcast last week. It's so fun. I just listened to your last, uh, I just finished your last episode with Ashley and laughed quite a bit about how you avoided Disneyland for years because that's how I felt with Walt Disney World. I grew up in Southern California and my family went to Disneyland all the time. Not too long ago, uh, I realized after the fact that I experienced my 100th trip to Disneyland. But natural that, that naturally, that meant I was incredibly biased and never wanted to go to Florida because Disneyland stole my entire heart. Also, Walt Disney World intimidated me because, due, because of how big it is. I've been to Walt Disney World twice now and just surprised my husband with a trip that we're taking in September. Your podcast has made me super eager to plan and get excited for our trip. I live in Minnesota now and miss going to Disney parks on a regular basis, so I'm grateful for this podcast. You are a delight. Have a happy Tuesday. Warmly, warmly, Katie. So how cool is that, Scott? Because again, I did avoid Disneyland because I thought, ah, two parks, no transportation, old, you know, and even, and I'm, I'm like so nostalgic and you were there. I mean, you were there for every moment of when I found Disneyland. I was just, I mean, I was a seven year old for a week. Like I just, yeah, you were, and I still am like, I mean, I, I cannot get enough. I can't get Disney you to Land. stop talking about it. I, you know, I mean, you, I got my hat you on You almost today. seem to love it as much as cruise uh, line. I do. It, it's, it's so awesome. Like I love and, Disneyland so much. Yeah. It's, you know, I love that email. And one thing it makes me think about is like, sometimes you need that spark and you, you were, you needed that. Spark I did that need time. it. I'm not trying to go bad. too deep into like your personal yeah. stuff, but like, I know that you were like, man, I've been, I, all I do is go to Walt Disney World. Like, like I need a, I need a change. So you went there and I feel like that sparked your interest in the whole company where you're like, oh man, like now I can't get, can't wait to go back to Walt Disney World again, because mm -hmm. like now I got this like boom. And like, I've been there too, where I'm just like, man, like I go to Walt Disney World like a lot and I'm very blessed and very fortunate that I get to do that. But sometimes you just need to switch it up. So a trip to the other park if you're like domestic like helps spark that sometimes i feel like and then you just fall in love with the walt disney world product i mean the walt disney project again so i, I love reading that email yeah and i'm so glad like with katie you know like because no matter what no matter how much like she loves disneyland because she got to go a hundred times right you get complacent because you know like she's just think about it i mean like alice in wonderland is your favorite attraction out there you know and i love the matterhorn and i've for some reason, I love eating at the Rose Tavern, you know, in, yeah. in Fantasyland. I don't know why I love that little restaurant, but I do. And, you know, like if I did it so much, it would just be, it wouldn't be as special. And that's how I am with some places around Walt Disney World. But having, when you're lucky enough to be able to have something like, like Disneyland for me, that was, it was comfortable because like, I knew like, oh, there's Peter Pan. Oh, I know how fantasy land, there, there is a fantasy land. There's a tomorrow land. There's an adventure land, but it was all different. And I was still kind of like, like a little bit lost when I went in there and things were in different places. I was like, this is so great because I can get lost again. I can't get lost at Walt Disney World. I just, I don't like, I, you know, I, it's like, it's like going to rob my house at this point. You know, it's, it's so comfortable, which comfortable is good. But I mean, it, I, I love the, the exploration and the discovery that I got again. And I, I love that, you know, Katie's going to get this with her husband, because even if you've been once, twice, three times, especially places like Walt Disney World, there's still so much discovery that she has so in front of her. And I'm so excited for that. I'm glad she enjoys the show because that's what it's all about. It's all about discovery and it's about sharing great memories. And she'll have tons of those. Yeah. What a transition though, where like you go to Disneyland all the time. Now you're in Minnesota. I hope you're enjoying those winters. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. That's where the BR Guest Podcast really comes in handy. We'll get you through those winters. We'll uh, yeah. we'll talk about the good times. And also shout out to Tracy Lynn tuned in on Facebook. It's her birthday. And all she's asking for for her birthday is a birthday ding. There you go. Happy birthday. You ask, <laughs> you deliver. That's it. Oh, and also, by the way, Fulton, I saw him on Wish TV interviewed on social media. One of our oh. great friends out in Indiana. And I saw some clips of him in the Special Olympics. Tore it up in track and field. Won some gold medals. So shout out to our good friend Fulton out in, uh, out in Indiana, representing the Special Olympics uh, for many, many years. Had a great year here in 2024. Couldn't be more proud. So congratulations on your big victories. We are super proud of you. All right. So we're going to wrap this show up. We're going to be back on Friday, queuing it up. We're going to talk about all kinds of different best cues, worst cues, cues that we missed that are no longer around. Hottest cues, coldest cues, darkest cues, most unique cues. We're just going to talk cues, pool cues. No, probably not pool cues. 
but we'll talk about all kinds of cues. You throw them in the queue. If you want us to talk about, you think you have a superlative for a cue, put it in the chat. We'll try to address it on Friday show. So if you're here live, let's get at it right now. But until then, we want to see you in the clubhouse. Be our guest podcast.com slash discord. The conversation goes 24 seven from folks all around the world. No nonsense, no ads, just fun. Disney conversation with great folks coming over and join us again. Be our guest podcast.com slash discord. We're looking for you right now. Also, the show is brought to you by the magic for less travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney vacation, whether it's to Walt Disney world, Disneyland, Disney cruise line, or adventures by Disney. We want to help you plan that trip for no additional cost to you. Check them out today over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link, beourguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you to our Patreon supporters that make all these shows possible. Just $5 a month supports our podcast. It means a whole lot. And you'll get a bonus show called Mike in the Midwest. So come on over this week, patreon.com slash beourguestpodcast. Scott's getting ready to take the European vacation, and that's going to be fun. So you need to make sure you're following him on the social media at Epscott, E-P-S-C-O-T. I'm at Be Our Guest Mike. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, threads. We're going to have lots of content there over the next few weeks. And, of course, we'll have a live call-in show. So this weekend is uh, Father's Day, but we're going to try to swing it this Sunday. Are we still going to try to make it happen? We're going to try to do it, yeah. Okay, we'll try to. So if we're there, come on, join us. Give us a call. 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central, all the places, Sunday night. So give us a holler for that. All right, we're going to get out of here. We'll be queuing it up on Friday, so we'll be here. We want you to be here as well. Also, ratings and review on iTunes. Or if, iTunes, that's so old. Apple Podcasts. Thanks for everybody who is doing that. We appreciate those so much. If you could do that between here and Friday, you have a few minutes, please do that. We appreciate those five-star reviews. All right, we're going to jump out of here. We'll be back again on Friday. So for Scott, I'm Mike. Wishing you a great Wednesday. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. You've been listening to the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. If you have questions, comments, or would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you real soon.